I'm sharing a product spotlight of the new Athern InScale Big Boy on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, today I am excited to bring to you a product spotlight of the brand new Athern InScale Big Boy. Now, the model that I'm looking at today is the product sample that was shared with Model Railroad News, and it's on loan to me for the sake of doing this spotlight. We're going to run it on the layout, see how it runs, listen to the sound that comes from this Soundtrack Tsunami 2 sound decoder, and really get an up-close and personal look. Now, I'm very excited to, to look at this locomotive. Even though a big boy wouldn't fit with either my railroad or my era on my particular layout, I've been a fan of the big boy for many, many years, and especially so after I got to see 4014 on the rails in November of 2019 in Kansas City as it was, it was on its way back home to Cheyenne after its tour around the country. It was an incredible thing to see one under steam again. I'd seen several of them on static displays for years, but it was fantastic to, to see him running again. And there is absolutely nothing like the sound of the whistle from a big boy. <laughs> So I'm excited to, to take a look at this one and to run it a little bit on the layout. So with that said, let's head on over to the workbench. We're going to get this model opened up, have a close look at the details, and then watch it run on the layout. And I've got a little special something for you today as we do this particular product spotlight. You'll see that a little later in the video. With 13,000 unique items in inventory and one-day shipping, Midwest Model Railroad is your one-stop model railroad shop. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. Well, here I am with the Athern InScale Big Boy, and uh, I've got it here in the box. And uh, just so you know what we're going to be looking at here today, um, Athern made a couple versions of the Big Boy, they made the uh, rebuilt 4014 uh, with the uh, oil burning tender. Uh, and the one that I have here is the original configuration with the coal burning tender, in this case, number 4011. And so we're going to be looking at 4011 with a coal tender today. Uh, I apologize for the little bit of glare, but this, this box, it's a beautiful presentation, uh, but it's a very, very shiny box. So <laughs> getting any angle, getting a little bit of glare. So let's get right into it today. We're going to open this up. Um, box this is a very snug fitting lid. Fits really, really nice. And we get the lid off and set it aside. Uh, right off, we see the warranty and registration card that uh, you'll want to fill out uh, in case you have any trouble. And, and I love this. This is something that uh, I first saw with Lionel Trains uh, years ago. And I love it when you get these nice kind of collector's versions of trains. You get this nice presentation book. Uh, and this one is, uh, I've looked at it before, and it is really, really nice. Uh, you see you got a nice uh, cover here. Uh, the first couple of pages have uh, some historic information about the big boy, kind of its uh, um, background, its history, uh, some, some statistics about the prototype big boy here. Uh, and a very nice, uh, very nice presentation there. And then uh, we have several pages that are an exploded parts diagram, show you exactly how it go together. It goes together from the very internal, the motor, uh, the, the, the drivetrain inside of the, uh, the boiler. And then the next page, you see uh, a lot of the detail parts. Every part is numbered. And then there is a, uh, an index here that, um, uh, names and describes every, every part so you know exactly what everything is. And then this page, of course, is the breakdown for the tender. Uh, you'll notice the tender is where the, the speaker for the, the sound uh, decoder is, is housed. 
and uh, then you have uh, some information about uh, uh, caring for and running the locomotive and then uh, information about the uh, the DCC and sound decoder various CVs and various functions and how they're mapped uh, the basic information that you would need to be able to do what you want if you're going to do any customization to the sounds or or different effects with the uh, with the sound decoder, the soundtracks decoder, uh, that information is all here. I, I, did I say it has a Tsunami 2, the soundtrack Tsunami 2 sound decoder? If not, I've, I've said that now, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. So I love this book. Great, great presentation, uh, the way it's put together and, and uh, very nicely, very nicely done. Uh, the, the locomotive, of course, is packed very, very safely and securely in foam. We've got a foam sheet here over the top. And then as we get into the box itself, um, one part here that is a, a, an extra part, it's an optional part. Uh, this is actually a wood deck that can go on top of the tender. You're going to see that the tender has the, uh, the, the later steel deck on top of it. Uh, but you, if, you, if you choose, you can actually put the, the wood deck if you'd rather have the earlier configuration. And then here is our big boy itself. I'm just going to set the box aside. Um, comes encased in plastic. It has this plastic sleeve that holds together the, the two-part plastic, plastic encasement. We'll lift the top off here. has this soft plastic insert inside to uh, just protect the details. And we're going to carefully set it up and out of this uh, because, of course, a steam locomotive, it is connected uh, to the, the, the tender uh, with a draw bar, but also some wires that connect the decoder and the, and the speaker to uh, all of the mechanism of the motor itself. Uh, so here is our big boy. You're, of course, looking at it from the top there. And you'll, you'll get a better view as we get out and get some good photos and, and videos on the layout. But I, I'm just going to give you a quick look here at the, uh, at the workbench. Uh, set it up here, and it, it's it's way too big for my in-scale locomotive cradle. Uh, but uh, but just want to tip it up here and let you have a, a first look at the the detailing is very very nice. It's got some great very fine but very crisp lettering uh, a, a, across the locomotive as far as some some labeling uh, with the the locomotive and the designation uh, as well as the road number, the Union Pacific, uh, but also some 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 warning labels. Uh, that uh, are, are included there as well. Uh, has the 4011 number boards on the front. You'll see that better when we get out to uh, to the layout. Uh, but but the various the, the, the cylinders, the, the the connecting rods, and all of the side rods, all of the moving part details. The, uh, uh, the, the it's just all beautifully beautifully done. The very uh, the, the handrails are are uh, they feel like brass wire, uh, some kind of wire anyway. Uh, but very very fine, very delicate. The details along the uh, along the tender are uh, just it, it's it's absolutely beautiful the way this uh, model has been has been put together uh, i'm going to carefully just roll it over here in my cradle so we can kind of see the details of the other side looks like it has separately applied cut levers here on the back of the the tender that are very fine and and, and very nice and I know this is kind of upside down to you, but I thought this was the easiest way to just get a look at the side. The rivet detail is absolutely gorgeous, especially here on the side of the uh, of the firebox down towards the ash pan, but also all uh, uh, across the, the, the tender. Uh, if you're a rivet counter, uh, you, you, you can count to your heart's desire on this locomotive. The rivet detail is absolutely beautiful. The radiators... Uh, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a gorgeous, a gorgeous model. Uh, I do like the red paint that's been applied to, uh, to, to, to the various, uh, uh, uh mechanical wheels here. And, uh, of course the, the drivers all look really, really good. Uh, I'm going to try to carefully turn this upside down for just a moment. And, uh, I hope you can see, I'll let you see it has traction tires on, on two axles, one axle for each set of drivers. So the very rearmost axle and the very frontmost axle of drivers have, have traction tires on them. So that will help the uh, traction of the locomotive. Uh, and then of course you have, uh, electrical pickup from, from wheels across the, the length of the locomotive. Um, 
all looks really, 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 really good. I wanted to give you a sense of how heavy this locomotive is. It is, it is definitely a two-handed locomotive. Uh, in in scale, a lot of times, a locomotive, a steam locomotive with a tender, you can you can grab them with one hand. Uh, I wouldn't do that with this locomotive. It's uh, it's just just too big, too long, too heavy. Uh, how heavy is it? Well, let's find out. I'm going to bring in my uh, scale that I use for for weighing freight cars. Turn it on and let it calibrate here. And then we'll set this locomotive up here, even at an angle. It doesn't truly fit on there, but uh, it sits on there enough to get a weight. And we have a 7.5 ounce in-scale locomotive here. So that's uh, some, some great weight. And I know that it will, uh, it will, it will pull uh, very, very well. Now we're going to, uh, I'm going to take this uh, out to the layout. We're going to set it up. We're going to do uh, a little bit of running uh, so you can see how it pulls. I want you to be able to hear the, the, the sound from it. Uh, I want you to get a close up of the, the moving parts uh, as it rolls by. And also we're going to talk uh, briefly to Jim Wigan from Athern and let him tell us a little bit about uh, this locomotive and, and, and his impression of it. Well, I'm here with Jim Wigan, who is a brand manager with Atherton Trains, and we're going to talk to Jim just a little bit about the big boy and find out a little bit about it from the production side. Uh, Jim, I, I can tell you, I've had a lot of fun uh, playing with the big boy here on, on my layout for uh, the first few days, and it, it's a beautiful model. It's got fantastic detail. It runs like a charm. I'm impressed with the sound. I really, really love this video. I, I think I told you before we started recording, as a BNSF modern modeler, I don't have any need for a big boy, but boy, I, I sure do want one. <laughs> um, tell us a, a little bit about what goes into producing a model like this. How long has this project been in the works? How long does it take to get from you know, the, the decision to produce a model to actually getting it in the hands of a modeler. Sure. And, and thanks, Ron, for your kind words on the big boy. We're, we're pretty proud of it. Um, <clears throat> myself being an end scaler, I was pretty excited to see us release this. And uh, that's a great question. Basically, like any project, it starts with research. Research is key. Um, it requires our developers at Ather to spend countless hours uh, both communicating with historical societies looking at actual engineering drawings, 
translating all that into CAD drawings and then sending that into our factory. And sometimes that can take up to three years, depending on the model. Now with like the big boy, as complex as it is, that was a, um, a project that took many, many years. And in some cases, like the big boy here, um, if it's been released before, we're never content with what we have. We want to keep pushing it forward. So like with your example there, it has a tsunami sound. And that brings in a whole new level of um, getting more developers involved. No longer you have just the model, but you have the decoder. So we would work with Soundtracks and we'd work with George Bogotok over at Soundtracks and they would get actual sound from the actual locomotive, digitize it and put it into the decoder so that when you purchase the finished piece and put it on your layout, everything is exactly the way you were hoping it would be. Yeah, that's one of the things I've really been impressed with with the big boy has been the sound and uh Having had the opportunity to see 4014 uh, a couple of years ago in person, uh, I know it, for a steam locomotive, when it is static, it is a loud locomotive. I mean, there's just a lot going on with that machine. And uh, Soundtrax has done a really good job of, of capturing that. You get all of that with, with, with this locomotive. So really, I mean, you know, 4014 has been on the rails now for, what, a couple of years and mm -hmm. a couple of years of, of uh, restoration before that, you've been working on this locomotive then almost as long as they've been working on getting a big boy back on the rails. Yeah, really have. And I mean, that's true, especially with a, with a compound steam locomotive such as the big boy or even the Challenger that we've offered in the past. Mm -hmm. Getting back to, uh, to the, uh, the, the big boy here, of course, you have you've produced a, a few different versions. Of course, you've, you've done the, uh, the, the restored oil burner version with the oil tender. Uh, the one I have here, 4011, of course, with the, with the coal tender. Now, we've already taken uh, an up-close look at a lot of the details on, on this locomotive and listened to the sound. Uh, but, but if I could just put you on the spot, what, what are some of the things that stand out to you, your impressions of this particular model of the big boy at N-Scale? One of the things that really impresses me the most is, um, earlier you probably heard me say it's a compound steam locomotive. It's generally, um, think of it as two steam locomotives that are articulated together. And getting that mechanism to work on a lot of different radiuses and end scale was a challenge for the designers. Um, in real life, you're looking at a locomotive that wouldn't be able to go on a lot of uh, rails in the East Coast just because it's so tight. We know that there are guys that are into T-Track, uh, Fremo N and N-Track, and they've got smaller uh, home layouts. They want to enjoy the big boy too. So when the developers came up with this locomotive, um, they came up with a system that not only captured the scale effect of the actual compound locomotive, but allowed it to really navigate really well into uh, most radiuses. Now it's not going to go through a nine and three quarter, but it will go through some of your bigger, bigger ones. And then of course, let's not forget the detail. I mean, the detail in this and end scale is just amazing. Um, we've, we've taken pictures of these, um, with our with our Horizon Hobby photographer, and you can get fooled into thinking it's HO or even full scale. It's that detailed. Well, I know just just to to make a comment about the uh, the curve radius. I, I wasn't sure when I knew I was uh, going to get to to test a big boy how it would run on my layout. I've got moderately broad curves for for an in scale layout, but uh, if you were thinking about it in terms of a prototype big boy, you know. <laughs> They, uh, they, they, they probably would not be, be broad enough, but I had no problem uh, getting the big boy to, to run on my 18-inch curves on the main line and also ran it on some 16-inch curves on some, some sidings and uh, never, never had it uh, on the ground a single time. It tracked very, very well. And so I was, I was personally impressed with, with that. It looks, looks really good and yet stays on those, on those tighter curves. Any thoughts about the possibility of, a, of another run? I think so. I think you're going to see um, a possible future run. And what which ones we do, well, we'll just have to see. I, I, I understand. I know I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. There are probably about decisions that haven't been made, but I uh, had to ask. Well, Jim, thank you again so much. Appreciate your time today and appreciate this beautiful model of the big boy. Hey, thanks, Ron. Appreciate it.
Well, I personally think this is a spectacular model of the big boy in N-Scale that Atherin has produced. I don't get an opportunity to run a lot of steam in N-Scale. Again, it's not my era. This locomotive really isn't my prototype either, but boy, it sure is a lot of fun. It sounds great and it runs really, really well. I've been very impressed with it for the few hours that I've been able to run it on my layout. Now, I know that these locomotives went really fast, these models did, and there are not a lot of them left out there, but they still can be had as of the date of this recording. Uh, I did a Google search earlier today, and you can still find some. Uh, so if this is a model that you're looking for, I would say go out and do your search and get a hold of one as soon as you can, because uh, they likely soon will be gone. Well, if you enjoyed this video, I've made several videos of product spotlights of various new locomotives on the market, and I put them in a playlist that you'll find linked in the corner of your screen right now. Be sure to check out the description down below and find the links to my Amazon page and my Amazon pick of the week, as well as my Micromark promo code and tons of other great links that I know you'll enjoy. Well, if you'd like some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure to join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?